<laughs> yeah, my hair. Um, it's just it's where I'm at right now. Frustrated and pissed off with current events, but in particularly, you know, my my fight for the last um, twenty years. And so it's just yeah, it's where I'm at. A little bit like this up to the uh, system. Go back a bit in two thousand and four. Um, because we as a family had brought back repatriated remains through English law, you have to have an inquest. And I just started to think a little, you know, light bulb moment. If I repatriated Jeff's remains, would that force a new inquest? But I think due to the degree of fragmentation and, and all the rest of it, and obviously what they knew they had, I think it was um, a day before mum's birthday um, in June. And I think she got a call from, you know, our police liaison officer. Some of his remains had been identified. And um, the, the piece in question was a, a, a piece of Jeff's collarbone. In 2004, um, Mum got another call from the, the police. And um, this time, three of his remains had been identified. They were small bone fragments. Um, I remember one was um, you know, from his, his thigh bone, but they, they were small. And so we now we had four bit of his scalp, bit of his face, bit of his jaw, his ear, just, you know, recognisable, you know. Cyril H. Wecht. I am a forensic pathologist and a medical legal consultant. I was the coroner of Allegheny County, Pittsburgh, and 129 surrounding municipalities for 20 years, two separate 10 year periods. Since 1957, I would estimate I have performed about 21,000 autopsies. I have reviewed, signed off, or supervised on about 41,000 other autopsies. Uh, when I was asked to review the Warren Commission report, it was in August of that year that I pointed out that the president's brain was missing. Others knew about it, but no one had said a word. And so anyway, so these are the things that I do, all of these consultations, and these autopsies, and then occasionally, you know, the major national controversial case. One of the things that, you know, I've always personally found to be quite striking is the degree of fragmentation of the remains. The title of this report is Human Identification Following the World Trade Center Disaster. Assessing Management Practices for Highly Fragmented and Co-Mingled Human Remains. So out of the, the 2,600 odd who died at the World Trade Center, you know, there's 22,000 fragments. Medical examiner personnel were initially caught off guard by the degree of destruction and fragmentation of the recovered human remains. 5,000 of those 22,000 fragments are smaller than an inch. It's 1,100 and something people have not been identified. That's a, it's a huge, you can't even fathom Jeff's remains no more than two, three percent of his body. It's actually the last remain identified in uh, May 2013. Um, this fragment that's still in New York was actually given a location. It's just south of the North Tower. It's between 18 and 41 meters away from the South Tower. Now, okay, it's not the kind of two or three hundred meters distance that some remains we found. There's a horrendous um, map that I think the fire brigade prepared, and they, you know, they tag whether it's a civilian firefighter, etc. But there is one that just tags human remains and it's it's awful you've got the two footprints of the towers and there's just this huge spread of remains that were once people okay we, we know the steel beams were propelled out with huge forces but the actual physical the stuff that i care about people and my brother were ejected outside of the um the footprints and they and it's just it's it's so unpleasant thinking about it but i've since read a lot that has been published about the, the search to, to try and identify people is this, this concept of co-mingling. The explosive force that blew over fire trucks and peeled stone facades from buildings also disintegrated human bodies, turning bones into flying shrapnel, the tidal wave of debris that carried human remains blocks away, depositing them in some cases on top of buildings, also fused um, soft tissue into bone fragments. And that basically means the impact of the, of the, the force of the explosion, you know, not just the, the, you know, the pancake collapse, whatever, uh, has actually mingled remains into my brother. And so the only ex explanation she could give me was they couldn't get a clear single DNA match in those remains. So I just got this horrible vision of, of other people's remains being removed from my brother's 
face. It was just, yeah, it's... That's not going to happen from crushing. Uh, a building collapses and uh, two or more people are crushed. I can't envision a situation in which the soft tissue of one victim is hurled with such force as to become embedded into, attached to a bony fragment of another victim. I can't envision that. And one of the things I always pondered about is, you know, okay, there's all this massive degree of fragmentation. Some people, nothing found at all. But you also had fairly large parts of people being found. I mean, there was one guy at the inquest, same floor as my brother, 86% of his body was found. I'm not going to say it was, but, you know, he kept, he was one of the two family members that actually bothered attending. I mean, there you go. But he's just there going, I don't, I don't understand why, because everyone kept being read out, you know, small fragments, small this, 2%, and he's sitting there going, how? And, and for me, you know, the unpleasant conclusion I've drawn is it's proximity to explosives. So if you were very close to the explosives, there's not a lot left of you. That's, that's something I've always, you know, thought about. Um, although it's quite a dark topic to kind of touch on or thought to have even. Um, this is a strange situation. I hope that the architects and engineers and others who have uh, studied this um, um, horrible tragedy and who have expressed their opinions will uh, be given the opportunity uh, to uh, testify in public. Uh, I hope that happens, and I'm amazed that it has not yet happened. When the dust settles, the glass and the metal, lies devastated, the screens still echo, every mind in America 